Hi there, Dan West again. I'm going to put a video up and it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a uh, slideshow uh, of a bird feeder that I made back in France uh, many, several years ago. Um, I recently built a bird feeder. I've been wanting to build one for the last three years and just haven't had the time or took the time to do it and I finally said you know I'm just gonna take a day and, and do it because I want, want this bird feeder and uh, but it wasn't gonna be something elaborate it be something very simple again a lot of the videos I make are, are for you know people just starting out so I don't want to start some really really complicated you know a lot of router bits all that kind of stuff just something pretty simple they could even make with a handsaw if they had to and but my I, my goal was I wanted this thing to be big enough to where I would have to load this thing with uh, bird feed every week. So it's going to be a little bit bigger. I did want to put this out in the weather. Uh, I got a patio, so it's going to be under my patio roof. It won't, it won't be subject to any rain or direct sunlight, but you know, it'll be on wind and all that jazz, but that's not no, no big deal. And uh, <clears throat> I would use scraps out, out of my shop. I don't want to have to go buy, you know, special wood for it. So uh, I went to my shop and got some wood. Now some of this wood got holes where I may put a screw in before and I, you know, saved it. Uh, uh, I didn't plug all the holes, uh, but most of it was, wasn't too bad. But I wanted to make decent cuts, square, that kind of deal, you know, and plane everything nice uh, towards you know, right angles and all that. And, um, you know, I came up with an idea. I've, I've, I've went on YouTube and looked at bird houses and bird feeders. Now, I'll tell you what, there are some talented people out there. Uh, the ideas, the concepts that come up with just beautiful from the very rustic. I mean, the rustic ones really look at some, I mean, really eye appeal, how they, you know, the materials they use, how, how simple it was, and you know, functional it, it was. Uh, you, I really, uh, I really had a lot of people, you know, all, all different materials. Not all wood, some they use cans, you know, uh, uh, pottery, uh, metal, some are uh, modern looking. I mean, it's all kinds. I've spent hours, there's a, and there's a lot of them out there. I have spent hours and looking at them, and it just uh, it really pleased me to know. And I've, I've always, you know, like animals, uh, uh, I'd rather try, really try to, you know, help them live a little bit instead of go out and kill them, you know. Uh, I'm, uh, and I just feed them instead of, you know, you know, play games with them. And, you know, uh, I've got an idea for a, you know, for a squirrel a house I'm going to make later on. Um, I feed them. I got, you know, like I said before, I my wife and I go out on the patio and it's real small. I'm, I'm building a little area to enlarge our area where we can go have coffee in the morning. Uh, you know, we're retired. But uh, I like to go out there and drink my coffee in the morning and sometimes go in the afternoon or the evening, you know, and it's, it's nice in the summertime. And I've got a, uh, a fountain out there that I'm going to uh, do a little bit different later on, but the, the birds go in there and drink water and, and take baths and all that. And, uh, again, now I've got this bird feeder that'll probably take about a generation or so for birds to, you know, locate it and start using it regularly. And... Um, I got hummingbird feeders out there under, under the eaves of my uh, patio. You know, it's not, again, they're out of the weather. And I got, like I said, I got this idea for squirrel. I feed squirrels on my wood uh, fence. I put some nuts up there and they come and get them. But <clears throat> I had built this, uh, when I built this recent bird feeder, I put one photo of the one that I made in France. And I've had some people ask me about it, you know, if I had plans on it, which I don't. Uh, you know, how I made it, this and that, you know, and uh, I'll clear that on a video. So uh, I'm going to put up this slideshow and uh, just describe it as best I can. And uh, uh, other than that, I hope maybe someone might get, get some enjoyment out of it. Uh, um, other than that, uh, 
there are some techniques in there, but I, you know, I really couldn't go into great detail because I'm not in the shop. But uh, I really don't want to make it you know that long to do that. So uh, uh, it is what it is. You know, uh, it's this video is not for everybody. That's for sure. You know, it's only for people who really are interested in, in bird houses, bird feeders. Uh, or even have appreciation for that type of stuff, you know. And I mean, maybe they don't make them, but they like to look at them. And again, you know, I'm sure probably not everyone's going to go through the whole video. They might be charred off, but whatever. It's, it's out there. I'm going to put it out there for you. It'll take a look at it and see if you like it. Might have some enjoyment. If you have a comment, by all means, my email address is going to be down there. And, and, you know, drop me a line, question, or a comment, or a criticism, whatever. You know, it doesn't, doesn't matter, you know. Um, that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it was a work of love for me, and I'm glad I still have the photos. I was surprised I found these pictures just three weeks ago going through some stuff. And I, I, I couldn't believe I still had these. I thought I left them back in France. So uh, I'm really glad I've got them. So uh, now I'll be out there for a long time. So uh, enjoy uh, if you happen to go in your shop. Have a good day at your shop. Remember, work safe. And as always, don't use anybody. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Have, have a good time. Bye-bye. And here we go, uh, starting the uh, slideshow with the uh, framing of the structure. That's the basic structure there. Uh, as you can see, the white... Uh, platform there it's plywood the eight spokes and the round center the round hub has a lip on it that will receive uh, the canister later and the white uh, spokes is so that either there'll be a quarter inch mesh wire that will go on top of that so that no debris will accumulate uh, in that area and plywood to solid floor it would just be a mess and not only just be messy, but I'm sure it could be uh, not very healthy for the animals too, the birds later on. So it all falls through to the ground and uh, it's not a problem. The, uh, the wood is very beautiful and pristine. Uh, we've got our wood from uh, Africa and South America. Uh, it was all clear lumber. We also had European oak and, and uh, other uh, uh, hardwoods that were uh, native to the area. Um, I couldn't tell you what type of what this is though uh, I know I made a chessboard out of it later on and it was it came out really really beautiful wood um, on the plywood later you'll see I have a, a same hardwood uh, banding all the way around it uh, uh, and uh, the post above all those rafters are mortised tended into that post above and on the plate they are cut tight to the plate and to the configuration of the post that has that eight, uh, the angle for eight-sided uh, configuration. Uh, as you can see left to right, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, rafters are cut pretty snug to the, uh, the, the plate. Uh, there's no really huge gaps. If, you, if I took a picture up underneath, um, you, could, you could see better how it's cut like a V, you know, into uh, the, the conformity of the angle. And, you know, it took some time, but I, you know, it's labor of love. You, you know, you, you like what you do and you took, put that extra time into it. Uh, whether you're, you know, working on a car, customizing a car, or you like fly fishing or whatever, you know, uh, you just put that kind of time in it because you love it to do it. And of course, I, I uh, finished everything uh, on this main structure before I put the roof on. It'd be a lot easier to get in there and do all the sanding and, and the, um, you know, the reapplying of the, of the I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I put some kind of urethane varnish on it and I usually put you know, eight coats so uh, it would be outside so I know it, it took a long I'm probably took two three weeks maybe uh, to do all that because it was winter time I believe it was around April I can tell because of the flowers the tulips were in the yard later you'll see them and they always bloom right around April so um, it's cold back there at that time of year and um uh, other than that, uh, those balusters, the uh, balustrades are they're uh, half-inch fluted dowels, and uh, they're you know there's one set of them 
that's removable so I can access the uh, container uh, inside the, the feeder. Um, <clears throat> other than that, uh, uh, you know, it's pretty, you know, it's just not a real complex design, but yet there's some, you know, some techniques uh, involved in, in getting everything right. You, you've got to be precise in your cuts, you know, to make everything, you know, look right. And I definitely don't want to use putty, that's for sure. Uh, uh, other than that, uh, it, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was, it took me several, you know, several, several weekends to do this too. I mean, I worked after work, but it took, it took time to, to, to build this thing. This is the canister. That's the lid. It shows where you, you pinch the two black bars in the middle together and then the lid uh, releases. And for the life of me, I cannot remember how this thing worked because it sits vertically in that round uh, you know, section. There's a lift there for the can to sit in. I can't remember how. The, I must have had holes cut into it somehow, and yet it didn't. Uh, it didn't bleed up. I can't remember how how it wouldn't just pour out. So, I, unfortunately, I, I just can't. I, all I know is it worked. It worked really well, and the birds had uh, more than enough, and they didn't lose any huge amount of feed at at the bottom. Uh, I didn't have to go out there every day in. in refill it because all the, all the seeds ran out no but I just I'm sorry I just can't remember how how it worked how you know but it did it worked just fine and it served a purpose and, and it was very neat looking too you know not really complicated and simple and straightforward this uh, next uh, video will show the uh, removable railing there again they're glued to the top rail solidly and they go into the proper holes at the plate and they go snug and they don't move they're solid and when you're once once in place you just can't tell which one you know where it's at you, you just can't it looks you know they're, it looks like it's just part of everything else there's no big gaps and all that so that uh, that worked real well and then there's the plywood again the plywood has a little bit of a, of a challenge to it because you're dealing at compound angles you, you have the slope of the other roof you have the eight-sided angle it's got to be cut vertical and yet you have the post at the top is the point because the two flat parts are where the rafters are so at the top it's got to be cut snug there which i did and uh you know you got eight sides like that so uh, you know it had little little particularities here and there this uh Next view shows uh, again the rafters. How the, how the cuts were pretty, pretty clean. You know, it really, really, uh, I just, it was fun doing this little thing. It's kind of like a little tiny gazebo. You know, kind of brought back good memories. Uh, days gone by when I used to do that kind of framing in my youth. Uh, it was, uh, you know, you're strong. <laughs> you know, every day's a, a new adventure, and it was always. It was fun, you know. Today it would be just so much work, uh, but um, back then it was just it was just a lot of fun. I enjoyed uh, what I did. I had good uh, good men who taught me the right way to do things. So uh, this next little shot will um, show the uh, roof is completed. You can see up underneath uh, the rafters, and you can see the cuts of the the, uh, the rafters on the plates and all that. And just another, another view of, you know, of, you know work, the workmanship. And, uh, uh, it just looked, looked nice. The little thing looked nice. So, uh, um, you know, I I can't say enough again for the wood that we had, but it really was beautiful wood. And, uh, I don't know what type it was, but we never had, i never seen knots. Uh, in, in our stuff, we, of course, you never, you know, we never made it, but I mean, even the wood, just, uh, it was just so, so clean, I have no idea, you know, what, what kind of, you know, the name of it, but uh, it was really, really beautiful wood, and it, and it stained real well, too, you know, no blotchy, and the grain was really nice on, on the wood, it's really wild, 
here's the uh, picture of the canister side and see I can't see there's a canister there and I still can't see any holes or, or what uh, I just I just beside me how all the, uh, the birds are fed uh, I just don't get it <laughs> I'm sure it's probably something very simple I'm just forgetting but, uh, uh, you know I'm racking my brain now trying to think how could that have worked you know if I had something inside it there's the wire mesh I was telling you about and uh, uh, again the, all the plywood is up and uh, it's getting ready to receive the, uh, uh, the shingles and um, again there's uh, there's my email if you happen to have any questions uh, um, if you have any comments or even criticism or whatever um, shoot me a line let me know you know uh, it's no problem I don't have a web page but um, um, we're getting to the point to where I'm gonna show you the shingles and then I got a few other photos that show uh, the, um, the the theater on its pedestal and in the backyard and I'll just kind of let that run out uh, so you can kind of look and see what's you know what the picture is all about instead of me jabbering back there. Um, other than that, uh, this next view it shows that this guy who's probably about uh, let's see I, I had to been around 55 at that time. I, I moved there around about just turning 50, and I had beard. I had that beard when I was 20 years old, and it wasn't until a few years later where I started to turn gray just on my beard, huh? and it only turned white, it started to turn white on the bottom side of my right jaw, only, it looked so weird, and that was it, I, I couldn't go that, so I made a decision, just, that's it, the days with the beard, I'm not going to walk around with a patch like that on my beard, so, so uh, I, uh, I shaved it all off, much to just like my wife and everyone else, uh, but I wasn't about to walk around with a white patch under my right jaw. I kind of had some long hair back then. I, 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 believe me, I didn't last long. I was just a little period there. I just seen, you know, what the heck what it would be like. Uh, and then shortly I came back and trimmed it, you know. Still kept my beard, but I just trimmed my hair back. Now, this, I did flashing of all things. That I flashed the end grain of the plywood. And what that is, Pepsi Cola cans. I took uh, tin snips and cut uh, Pepsi Cola cans in the inside out, and I took and you know bent it, you know folded it, and it worked really well, and stapled it to the plywood, and it, uh, it worked really well. Uh, wasn't bad, and I did that did that to to protect the end grain of the plywood, so you know it have some little extra protection from the weather. And uh, other than that, uh, you can't see there, but I've got lines laid out for the shingles. <clears throat> and it's just uh, unfortunately you can't see it uh, there's uh, the signaling process already going and that material is made out of the actual bark that comes off of the, the, the logs that we have I would go into the bin there and I would uh, get these scraps of uh, bark a long piece of bark and I made a uh, cut strips and then I made uh, a template to run these uh, pieces of bark upside down through my thickness planer so I could get an angle and actually make it like an actual shim, uh, a, uh, a shim shingle, like a shim shingle, actually, a miniature. And then I cut the widths and then I cut the lengths. And then I came back with that layout and I would uh, glue and staple each uh, shingle in place and then cut them as I get to the edge you know, to form to the, to the angle and I did that piece by piece all the way around and it has a very precise overhang for the uh, the metal flashing and then later I finished that off with uh, a ridge cap and this is what it looked like finished and I thought that it was just beautiful. to me that just was the uh, creme de la creme that did the icing on the cake it just that extra touch just really, in my opinion, made a difference. And uh, again, every one of them is 
was placed individually, glued, and stapled. And uh, what you see there, there are actually three three times the length. If you, if you see, like, a, let's say it's an inch, it's three inches long total. You know, so it's a lot of uh, there's a lot of play in there. A lot, of, I should say, a lot of material under there. And it was just beautiful. Uh, the other thing is, is uh, I had some uh, four-inch uh, square steel uh, uh, post that was the channel post, I would call it. That was uh, excursion, is a better word. Uh, that was uh, given to me from my boss on a job. He had did some work there and had some scrap left over and he could throw it away anyway. So uh, you'll see in the in the backyard, I took and made us a solid tube and poured some uh, around some concrete. In that post, I put uh, two bolts, nutted bolts, so it would go in the concrete and not move. And uh, on each flat of the post, I put a uh, uh, angle bracket, bracket on there so that it would conform to four of the uh, spokes that we'd say that was in the, in the flooring and screwed it from underneath and it was just solid. Uh, uh, it made a good base and it was a nice height, very easy access, and, uh, you know, it was out of the way and, you know, in the backyard by the flowers and uh, it, it looked nice, it looked, it looked really well. So uh, I've got one more uh, picture and, and it, it shows me standing there and like I said, you can see in the background uh, of this next picture you'll see uh, tulips and you'll see uh, I think three or four other pictures of the backyard. Uh, uh, it, it's cold. It's, it's it's winter time, and you'll see I'm in a coat. And just let you know that uh, the wall, or the rock wall, you're going to see uh, the wall was 18 1800 years old. Um, the village I lived in was uh, part of it was a chateau, not a chateau, a, a chapel just across Caddy Corner from my house. And that that chapel was part of a chateau that was there, but the chateau is long gone. And then much of the, the the exterior wall is uh, was all gone too. It's all farmland now. I had a population of a hundred people in my little village where I lived. Uh, and there I am. I'm all you know, pretty well wrapped up in some weather. Uh, it, it's cold. You see a long tulips here. We have some beautiful flowers, big tulips, and uh, canna lilies were huge. I mean, those canna lilies you don't see them there, but they were really big flowers. And uh, I don't know why she did. All the stone work there. She did all the garden work. She was really into it. And again, that wall you see there, the wall's almost three foot thick uh, and been there for almost 2,000 years. It's, uh, but it was like that everywhere. That's what I loved about it. And the age and the beauty. Um, very enchanting. I, I just loved it there. Uh, really wasn't planning on coming back. But uh, that's it. Uh, I'm going to leave you with this. Um, uh, you're going to see some uh, some other pictures of it from uh, the elevated views from my back uh, back window uh, from my bedroom, and uh, and just a few other sites uh, along that wall. And you'll see another gate at the far end. Again, that gate's old, still works. It's the old time hinge on that sucker and the bend them stones. It's just. Uh, I don't know. To me, it just kind of kind of thrills me in a way. Something so old, and I, and I was buying and it uh, now, you know, my house. And it functioned. It just uh, I thought of the, I would think of the old men who built those years ago, many, many, many years ago, and uh, it's still there, you know. So hopefully, kind of like this uh, bird feeder, it'll be there many, many years after I'm gone. So thank you for. Uh, taking the time to, to watch this, uh, however long you stayed. I uh, hope you had some kind of enjoyment, maybe you got some ideas out of it. Uh, uh, but uh, I just wanted to share it with you, and uh, along with so many others that are out there, just fantastic work. And uh, uh, I want to say, uh, have a good day if you go out there and work today. Uh, work safe, and as always, don't use anybody. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.